Hey guys, in today's makeup tutorial, we are doing this chit chat get ready with me using my Shop My Stash items. I shopped for these items last week and I wanted to do a tutorial with this whole setup. And so, if you want to see how I got this look, stay tuned. We're getting into it right now. As always guys, I'm starting out with a toner. I would use a cotton pad on any other day, but I can't find them, so I'm gonna use a little scrap of paper towel. I feel like paper towel is honestly a pretty good product to use toner with because it doesn't really absorb all that much. I know paper towels are supposed to be absorbent, but I feel like cotton pads are truly, truly, really like wastefully absorbent. I must have had a really nice moisturizer on last night or sweat in my sleep because I felt a little bit more slick than usual. All right, so of course I'm using my Shop My Stash items. I don't really have a plan for today except that I wanted to do something bluish, something blue. Uh, I'm gonna mix two primers. I'm trying to use up these sample sizes. I have the Too Faced Hangover RX primer and I have the Good Molecules Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer. And I feel like they kind of do the same thing from my first impressions. So what I'm going to do is just mix them on the back of my hand and apply them to my face. Yeah, so basically they look almost identical. This one is the one from Too Faced, and this one is the one from Good Molecules. In comparing them, I feel like the one from Too Faced is a little bit more liquidy, less lotiony, and more, definitely more water-based, more comfortable. The one from Good Molecules strikes me as something that could be better for people with dry skin and a little bit more of a need for moisture and for creaminess, because I feel like the one from Too Faced truly is just really watery, it doesn't really feel replenishing in a very thick way. And I actually really like that. I was really prepared to kind of dog on this product. I don't mind it, I don't mind it. I don't know that I would spend my own money on a hydrating primer like this, but I certainly don't mind using it now that I have it in my collection. I have my hair pieces in. It's so funny that they actually ended up matching my hair color because like I've said, this isn't actually a hair color. I just stripped the um, pink out of my hair and I was left with this really fortuitously pretty color. I did tone it with a with a purple shampoo. I didn't really use um, a toner or anything and it came out actually looking exactly like my Bellamy extension. So that was a happy surprise. <laughs> I'm going in with my e.l.f. putty primer on a sponge and uh, again, I hate using stuff with my fingers, but when I use a sponge, I have no clue how much product I'm using, so let's just see. I forgot to mention that um, the e.l.f. putty primer I have is one that I DIY'd, so I mix a bunch of makeup pigments into it, so it is an illuminating product. Illuminating in the sense that it just gives my face a little bit of shimmer. I have mentioned it before, but basically this version of the illuminating primer can literally only be used on camera because it is super shiny in real life. And it's shiny on camera too, but I feel like it's a little bit more approachable <laughs> on camera. For a face product, I think I'm going to use my Too Faced Born This Way foundation. I have been meaning to use this up. It is getting, I mean, honestly, how can I tell how much is in here? I mean, it looks like there's not that much product left when I take out the stopper, but at the same time, it's so hard to tell, right? So, I'm not sure. For concealer, I'm using my e.l.f. Hydrating Concealer. This one is a good one, and also I am running low on it, so I can't wait to swap it out for a better color for me. This one, honestly, is just way too light. This is in light ivory, and I really like it for dramatic looks. Fine on camera, but I do find that when I want to wear this out in real life, sometimes it can be really stark and a lot. Um, I'll just show you what I do in that instance. I'll usually mix it with a darker concealer. This one is the Milani Conceal and Perfect in Light Natural. This is a true skin tone match, and so you can see wherever I put it, it kind of just blanks out the skin, and it really just looks like my skin has just been... I don't know, facetuned, blurred out. I'm going to take this sponge. I've soaked it with a little bit of a hyaluronic acid um, setting spray. So it should be pretty moist and hydrating. I love me a sponge with a really nice um, surface area. I feel like it's so easy to blend. I just realized what I noticed about myself. When I bleach my brows and I do all of my concealer like this, I kind of feel like Nikki Tutorials. You know how she's like very blonde, very fair. She also has really light brows and whenever she does her blanking out of the canvas, she looks, I look just like her. Um, oh my god, that's so funny. 
Okay, all right, we have moved on to the eyes. And of course, I always say I never really prime my eyes. And I don't know, I'm having second thoughts about it. So I'm just going to go into my putty primer, see if I can get down a wax layer. Yeah, it looks like it's depositing some product. I don't really know if it's going to make a difference, but I have it. So let's use her up with um, cream shadows, this kind of product. Especially if they're waxy, you really have to be aware of how quickly you're using them up just because they do kind of dry out, especially around the edges. And I believe you can rehydrate them somehow, but it does kind of change or alter the texture of the product. I've done that with my paint pot before. And so I've kind of decided to kind of, instead of try to rehydrate it, just to use it up quickly. So today I kind of decided I wanted to do a bluish eye, like a bluey purpley eye. And I haven't used this blue from the Huda palette yet. So I'm going to just go straight in. Let's just do it. I mean, balls to the wall, right? So I'm going to take the color Haze on a slightly fluffy brush, but not too big because my eyes are small. And I'm just going to go straight into the crease. Let's see what that looks like. Tapping off the excess and patting straight onto the eyes. Yeah, it's definitely got like a mermaidy quality to it. It's got that hint of green that turns it more turquoise than blue. Y'all can see just how turquoise that is. And I really wanted today's look to be basically an outer corner blue color. I didn't want the whole thing to be blue. I just wanted um, like a pop of blue. I feel like the pop of blue was so popular for a while, but I wasn't on that train, unfortunately. I wasn't on the bandwagon at the time. And I feel like I never tried blue eyeshadow. It just like wasn't a thing I did. So unfortunately, there isn't really another way for me to get closer to you guys. So hopefully you can see enough just like this. Um, I have used a clean blending brush just to blend out the edges to make sure that they're not super harsh. I feel like that is fine. I know like it's not perfect, but I'm not someone who is super concerned with perfect. I'm just going to take maybe a skin tone color, blend it out. Yeah, that's fine, right? Not a big deal. Actually, I feel like that darkened my skin a little bit. In person, you can definitely see that that darkened my skin, but it's okay, whatever. Let's figure out what to do in this inner corner. What is it? This supernova color is really interesting to me. I feel like I have never entertained putting a red, purple, and a blue together. So why don't we try supernova? Supernova looks like this. Yeah, that is really pretty. It's super colorful. I've never, ever, ever done a look like this before. But hey, that is exactly what Makeup Playtime is about. Shopping your stash, trying new color combinations. I'm going to go into the shade Cosmic and Supermoon, and I'm just going to brighten the inner corner area just because I feel like it's a little bit dark for me. And I'm choosing these colors because they still have that purpley undertone that I like. And you can really see that shift. So I have mentioned it before, but this is the fourth time I have dipped into this palette and used this color Supermoon. It is really pretty. It's super metallic and shiny and chunky, but gosh, does it run out fast. I feel like I've always seen it gouged out at Sephora, and now I know why. It's because it's just so flaky that it wrecks itself. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't last very long at all. But the red to purple shift of this Supernova shade is really quite interesting, and I dig it a lot. I'm going to go back into Haze, that blue color, just to, um, I guess, make sure that the color is really saturated at the outer corner. The reason why this look is interesting to me is because the outer corner is not a darker color. The depth is actually kind of reversed. I feel like usually we put a bright color in the inner corner and a darker color in the outer corner. Today it just feels like the scripts are reversed a tiny bit. I'm going to go into these last two purple colors, Vortex and Hot Mess, and just very carefully do a little bit of shading right where my lash line is. Always remember to tap off. I got a tiny bit of fallout earlier and I am not pleased with that. I would rather build twice than have to add more concealer onto my face. Okay, honestly, I'm pretty pleased with this. I just wanted a tiny bit of depth here so that when I do my liquid liner, it doesn't look atrocious. <laughs> um, let's look for a liquid liner here. So in my little makeup kit, I think I'm going to go for a blue color because why not? I don't really have an occasion to wear blue liner, eyeliner all that often. These Shop Missé liners are super juicy and they've got a real brush tip, so I like them a lot. Hey, 
Has anyone tried the Falscara lashes from Kiss? I think they're supposed to be a Lashify dupe. Lashify is that brand where you apply lash gossamers um, with this like semi-permanent bonding glue. It's basically like DIY lash extensions, but instead of one single lash at a time, it's like a tiny clump of lashes at a time. Think about like chopped up really, really wispy lashes. And I've always wanted to try them, but they're freaking expensive. I mean, they're more affordable than lash extensions for sure because, you know, you're doing a labor yourself. But it's still not um, like an affordable alternative by any means. And so the drugstore finally um, started knocking off those products. And I'm curious to see if anyone has had any experience with them before. I know there are some reviews on um, the internet, of course, as someone who has Asian eyes, has hooded eyes, I... You know, I'm always skeptical until I see it on someone like myself with the kinds of lashes and, you know, eye shape that I have. And so I was wondering if anyone had any experience. I mean, separate to that, Asian or not, if you have experience, let me know. If it worked for you, let me know. If you like lash extensions or Lashify, I'm just curious about those things just because I feel like lashes are kind of like brows. Like, wouldn't you want to wake up and have them be beautiful, right? Unfortunately... I had to get rid of my beautiful woke up like this brows because they were just too, too beautiful for my blonde hair. You know, they were too dark, too thick, too strong. When my hair is dark, it makes me look totally put together and I can walk out looking like I did them. But now that my hair is blonde, if I leave my natural brows, they are so black and so thick, it really becomes super overwhelming. And so I have to redo them. But anyway, what I was saying is lashes are definitely one of those things where it's like, who doesn't want to just wake up and have really nice lashes, right? So I'm curious to see if anyone has tried Lashify or some other kind of lash extension and what that was like for you, because I'm curious, you girl's curious. Look at how much of this product I have used up. I'm super excited to pan this thing. Let me do my freckles. This is my little freck pen. Apparently this is full-sized. Tragic, because I only used it once and it is already kind of wearing out. So basically what you do, sorry, I'm covering up. You basically just put a lot of dots on your skin, take your finger, blend them out. I have these lashes that I DIY basically by putting two pairs of ratty lashes together. Um, I love that hack. So if any of your lashes are getting kind of old and crusty and mangy, just put two of them together and you get a really cool stacked effect. So yeah, lash hack for those of y'all who don't wear a ton of lashes, it's a really good one. But yeah, the stacking method works really well when you've got lashes that are objectively very high quality, like the hairs are really nice and the band is nice and thin. So I just put a little bit of Libra underneath my eyes because I felt like they were very, very top-heavy and in a way that I didn't love. Going back into Hot Mess and Vortex, which are the dark matte shades, and I'm just going to deepen out the outer corner. So my favorite time to stack lashes is when I have lashes whose hair quality are really, really high. So the hairs are wispy, they're human-like, they're pretty, but the band is kind of falling apart because I've worn them five or six times. I feel like those are the best kind of lashes to add together just because you know that the integrity of the hair is there. All it's missing is maybe a couple of pieces or it's getting scraggly. And so once you kind of spruce them up with a friend, they look really quite nice. I feel like this looks absolutely crazy on camera. Maybe it looks crazy in real life too and I've kind of become immune to it. All right, we'll see if we keep these on. I was really excited about these lashes, but they look kind of insane. Okay, why don't we do the rest of the face and we'll come back to judge um, the eyes. So for face product, I have this pouch here of all of the face products that I want to be using up. Um, however, when it comes to the Huda palette, I feel like the best highlight is going to be this one or Supermoon again. Um, since I have used Supermoon to death, I'm going to go in with Cosmic instead. Cosmic is that really light purpley color, and I'm just going to apply it again to my cheekbones. And you can definitely see a purple shift. I kind of like bolder makeup nowadays. I definitely didn't while I was working in the schools and stuff, just because you don't want to be like actually distracting. But now that I'm at home, I'm all for brighter makeup, stuff that is a little bit bolder, a little crazier. Okay, 
So she's cute, but she's kind of a little bit darker than I was anticipating. And so I'm going to go into my Blinded by the Light highlight, and let's try this over the cheekbones instead. For blush, I'm going to go back into my palette, and I'm going to use this peachy color called Utopia. And I might mix it with Crash. Crash is this nudie, almost taupey brown color, and then this one is Utopia. I'm going to mix the two of them to get a neutrally pinky coral. So this is the color that I'm anticipating. So let's mix these two colors together. So Crash and Utopia, I'm doing equal parts of both. Yeah, there we go. That's really pretty. So guys, don't be afraid to use your powder products um, anywhere you like. I feel like nowadays eyeshadow formulations are so good in terms of blendability and pigmentation that you really probably are able to use whatever product wherever you want. Of course, um, the actual pigmentation and the sheen and the you know, textural variation between these products is going to differ. A blush is not going to be as pigmented as you know, an eyeshadow, hopefully. But I do think that there are ways to mix and match and make them wearable. I have tweaked the blush a tiny bit. I'm going in just to make sure that the blush is a little bit more blushy and not so taupey. I'm going in with Off Balance, which is this beautiful mauve pink shade, and I'm gonna hit it just kind of at the backs of my cheekbones just to do a tiny bit of sculpting. Yeah, that is super freaking colorful. I did not expect today's look to come out like this, but I kind of love it. I feel like it's super fun to try new things, right? Going over the nose. All right, I feel like this is um, pretty fun. For lips, all of my lip products are in here, and I'm definitely feeling a nude for today. So uh, I've got Ziggy by ColourPop. Ziggy is definitely a brown, so let's try the brown. So even though I tried to sheer it out, it ended up being such a strong, bold color anyway. So I think I'm going to take just a tiny hint of concealer just with my lip brush. And like literally the tiniest drop of concealer. I feel like this one might actually be too much. And I'm just going to try to sheer out how dark this lipstick is. Alright, so if you've got the patience to do this, I feel like doing a really brown lip color and then adding in a little bit of... Um, foundation or concealer and blending gives you a really nice your version of nude right because you're adding literally nude pigment into your lipstick let me check my lashes I feel like they are stabbing my eyes out they are I feel like these lashes are actually really distracting to the look so I'm gonna peel them off sorry guys you guys are way too big and way too distracting for my makeup today we're just gonna call it a look I feel like the lashes um, although they were really cute and I liked them they were causing me more stress than they were worth so let's take the hair down. I always hate clipping up my bangs because it destroys the, um, the shape. The fringe always gets a little bit of a, a kink. This is the final look. I ended up taking off the lashes. So if you see a little bit of um, space where the liner is supposed to be darkened up, ignore it. But I like the effect so far. I feel like it looks pretty fun and fresh. What do you guys think? I've never done blue and purple together, and certainly not bright blue in the outer corner and dark purple in the inner corner. I feel like it's really fresh and interesting for me. What do you think? Well, I feel like this has been a very successful shop my stash, get ready with me, and hopefully you got some inspiration to do color combinations that you haven't done before. I'm certainly someone who has, um, I guess, taken it easy in terms of pushing myself to do color, to do new things. Honestly, I feel like not having to teach in person has done a great number on my makeup creativity. While I was working in retail and while I've been teaching from home, it's been... Sorry guys, my camera cut out so I'm not sure if I remember what I was saying. Um, from what I recall, I was talking about how being at home and being able to experiment with my makeup more freely because I'm not scared of being judged, mostly by other adults. I feel like the students are usually pretty on board with me looking the way I do, but I feel like just from being just from being at home more often and having the freedom to play around with colors, play around with makeup, I mean, it's crazy what color can do for our psyches, right? And trying something just, just a little bit atypical. Of course, I didn't do like graphic liner or anything that is not very stereotypically me. I just changed the colors around a little bit. And just that was enough to feel very fresh and very inspired. So I hope you were able to take something creative away from this video. I hope you try out 
a different color combo or a different something or other. I think that's it, honestly. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes on Sundays beauty and beauty adjacent commentary. So if that sounds good to you, I would love to have you join our family. Thank you so much, guys. I love you, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye!